everyone, it's Chris from Genix Life is Good with my day three report on the uh, do-it-yourself version of the fasting mimicking diet. So I had another good day today. Um, I didn't get a whole lot of sleep last night. I was up late working on the blog and doing some other stuff. So I was expecting to be really tired this morning, but I have to say I had a lot of energy. So I don't know if that's the diet, um, the fasting. A lot of people say that they have more energy when they fast, probably because their body is not using the energy that it uh, would normally take to digest the food and they have that energy to spend elsewhere or maybe I'm just excited to be talking to you guys, I don't know. Um, I will say that I was more hungry today than I have been the last two days. Um, I was pretty hungry when I drove to work today and at work, which is unusual for me because with the intermittent fasting and not having breakfast and I've you know, done that for about two, two and a half years now. So typically I don't even get hungry until maybe 12.30, 1, 1.30 or so. Um, but I was hungry today. So what I do when I'm hungry and I, for whatever reason, I'm not eating is um, it helps me to drink hot drinks. So I had some hot tea. Works a lot better for me than cold tea or ice water or anything. And then the other thing I, I noticed today is I also had a bit of a headache today. Um, again, there could be a lot of different reasons why I have a headache, but uh, it's not uncommon to have headaches on day two and three of a fast. Um, and I have heard that's because your brain is essentially signaling to the body that it's out of fuel, that there's not enough glucose getting to the brain to you know, keep it operational. So it's the brain saying to the body, okay, dude, need fuel, do something. Um, and it's a signal to, for the body to take the body fat, get it to the liver where it gets broken down into the ketone bodies that then can cross the blood-brain barrier and provide fuel to the brain and obviously to the rest of the body. So I think that may have been what's happening today. Um, my ketone measurements today were again in the small area. So I'll, I'll show you guys what I use for the measurements. Um, I use these ketone test strips. I don't know how well you can see that on the camera. I'll, I'll post a picture as well. Um, there's 50 test strips in here. Uh, it's like $12 or so. It's a CVS private label brand. And um, inside you have this tube that has different, has a color scale. And essentially you match, you know, your test strip against these colors and it's either no ketones, trace amount, small amount, moderate, or large amount. Um, so interesting, um, I heard that while the keto sticks, the test, you know, the urinalysis test um, strips are not as accurate because, you know, you're kind of matching a color and um, it's only kind of a range as opposed to a distinct, discrete number um, that you get from a blood analysis or a breath analysis. Um, it doesn't really matter because as long as you have ketones that are showing up on your test strip, you're in ketosis, which makes sense because um, when you have ketones in your urine, that means that your body is excreting ketones and it only excretes um, ketones that it doesn't need, right? So it breaks down body fat to make ketones to meet its immediate energy needs and then whatever isn't needed gets excreted, which is what these test strips measure. So it's not really a contest of, well, my test strip is darker than yours and I'm more in ketosis than you are. It's really, you're either in ketosis, shown by having any kind of ketones in your, in your urine, or you're not in ketosis. In fact, I have read that um, People who are really well keto adapted, who've done it for a long time, or just really well adapted, um, their bodies are so good at, I guess, estimating the energy needs that their bodies only break down pretty much what is needed for the energy needs. So they're, they don't excrete a lot of extraneous ketones, is what I'm saying, right? So they might be in the small range, even though they're doing everything right and they're fully keto adapted. So I thought that was an interesting tidbit. Anyway, so um, speaking of ketosis, last night I didn't even take a measurement because I figured after my huge dinner with a lot of carbs, I would definitely not be in ketosis. And it kind of made me think about, I had, I reserved, you know, I was basically hoarding my calories the last two days, you know, kind of a, 
uh, test of, well, you know, how long can I hold out and then I'll have this big lavish dinner. And it occurred to me today that that might not be the best way to do it because um, if it kicks you out of ketosis, you know, you're in ketosis all day, but then you have a big meal and kicks you out, that's probably counterproductive. So I took a look um, at the Prolon site and the way their calories are spaced out during the day. So uh, for breakfast, you get a bar that's 280 calories, and that's about 40% of the calories that you have um, for the entire day. And then um, lunch is either 145 or I think 3. 40 or 320 or something. So you have on some days you have a smaller lunch and a bigger dinner and then on the other days you have a, a bigger lunch and a smaller dinner. So basically you either have sort of two meals that are like 40 and 40 percent and one that's about 20 or you have on the other set of days 40, 35 and a little over 20 percent of your calories. So um, Today I decided to try and go that route. So in addition to my Napa cabbage salad today, I also had my the majority of my potatoes so that I had just under 40% of my calories for lunch. And then I took about 15% for my snack, um, which leaves, I think, you know, 47, 48% for my dinner, um, which is cooking right here. It's another mixed vegetable soup, similar to what I had on the first day. A um, little bit different composition of vegetables, but you know, lots of yummy goodness here. I can't wait to eat. Um, so that's what I'm doing today. And then tomorrow I'm going to try to do a similar thing where, again, I'm going to try to space out lunch and dinner. I make them about the same size and then just sort of a little snack. I'm also going to change it up a little bit tomorrow because I want to make a kale smoothie. That's why you see the blender here. Uh, the other day I was making, before the diet, I was making a kale smoothie and um, I just wasn't in the mood for one of my sweet smoothies. Typically I do a bunch of kale, you know, a banana, an orange, a kiwi, some lemon juice, so, and then some coconut oil, so it's, you know, it has sweetness, it has tartness, but it's definitely fruity and they're good, I just wasn't in the mood for that that day. Um, so I decided to make a savory kale smoothie and I love that. Um, it's kind of like a, almost like a gazpacho and it was really good so I decided that would make a really good lunch. So I'm going to try that tomorrow. I'll do kale, then I have tomatoes, uh, I have cucumber. Uh, in my original smoothie I actually used zucchini because that gave it a little bit more body. Uh, unfortunately zucchini has more protein than I'm allowed to have for this meal tomorrow so I'm going to use cucumber instead. And then I have a little onion for flavor, lemon juice, and then for fat, I'm going to use walnuts tomorrow. I also have um, olive oil that I'm allowed tomorrow, but I think I'm going to save that for dinner. So that'll be the lunch smoothie. Um, you know, I'll add some spices, maybe a little pepper and salt, you know, maybe a dash of garlic powder or something. And then uh, snacks, it's going to be flax seeds and macadamia nuts. And then this will be dinner. I have another cucumber salad with a lemon and olive oil dressing. And then I'm saving my potatoes tomorrow for dinner rather than the snack. Uh, not sure yet what I'm going to make with this. Maybe some kind of hash, maybe a soup. We'll see. Um, that'll be my creativity for dinner tomorrow. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to day four on the fasting mimicking diet. And um, I will let you guys know how it went and you know how the ketones are tonight after dinner. We'll see if that kicks me out of ketosis or if I'm still in the small or trace amount. So uh, I will talk to you guys tomorrow night and let you know how everything uh, went tomorrow.